Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live, and we're coming to you live from the beautiful offices of First Baptist West. And, of course, as always, we're at Elizabeth's desk, and uh, we're looking forward to programs. And I want to thank all of you for uh, tuning in with us tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of fun things we're going to be doing, a lot of different things tonight, so uh, we just hope that you'll enjoy our program. So before we get going, let me uh, bring in my uh, sidekick. Uh, Kaylee Corson. So uh, let's just say hi to Kaylee. Well, Kaylee, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Doing well. How are you doing? Everything all right? Uh, it's a busy week. Busy week. Busy week of all meetings and no work to get done. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. So has it been a little quiet around your house than it was this time last week as yes, you were talking? Yes, it is so quiet. It's very, it's very nice. Okay, good, good. <laughs> so so how, how, how are you preparing for the weekend? We got this big program coming up Sunday and I understand you're singing the national anthem yeah, Sunday morning a lot of practice a lot of singing in the shower <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey I do that too but it's not for preparation to to, to do anything yeah so. I mean I'm sure my parents will be tired of hearing the national anthem by the end of the week so <laughs> yeah there you go. well I'm looking forward to it so we're gonna have a great time so you doing all right everything yes. else good yes good family well yeah well yeah other than being busy at work meetings Meetings, meetings huh? just meetings all week. Yeah, Ugh. all right. Well, maybe then tonight you can relax here and we'll enjoy. We got a lot of yes. people uh, watching here. Uh, we got Diana Boynton, uh, the Wyatts are here, Cindy Griffey, uh, Doug Snook. Hey, Doug, how are you doing? And uh, Dwayne and Miss Dupler, a lot of people. So uh, it's going to be a fun night tonight. We got, uh, got some special guests for you tonight. Looking forward to uh, what's going on on our, our program tonight. We have some guests with us and we have the sisters tonight. And I joked with them and said I was going to call them sisters and they're not nuns. They're actually <laughs> sisters. So uh, we have Susan Nance and uh, Sandy Sharkey are both going to be here and talk about Falls Creek and Wit and different things they're going to be doing. We also have uh, the Wyatt family is going to be here in just a little bit. So uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, but before we get to the three things you need to know segment, uh, as all of you know, Kaylee is my sidekick. <laughs> Co-host. Yeah. She's trying to work her way up to co-host. So we've done, we actually realized that we've done 14 episodes. This is our 14th show tonight. So about three weeks ago, you kind of joined in with us. Uh, so uh, we've got about nine or 10 more episodes left in season one. And then we're gonna to come to a close and then we're gonna pick it back up in season two next summer. So Kaylee has been wanting to be co-host. So what, what, what I've done, Kaylee, and uh, I've developed a series of tests. Okay. And that you're going to pass. We're gonna see, for you to be a co-host instead of my sidekick, you're going to have to be able to work, see how well you do with me, how well you work with me, uh, basically uh, how you relate to me and our chemistry okay. and how we can kind of think back and forth, right? <laughs> okay, yes. All right. So what, what we're going to do tonight, before we get to the three things you need to know, we've got a, a little game that Kaylee and I are going to play, and, and it's called Heads Up. Many of you may know this. That's where uh, you get your phone and you put it above your head and you try to give clues. You played that before, right? Yes. All right. So I know we used to do it in line when we were waiting in line for yes. youth stuff. Yes. Y'all would always do it. So Kaylee's good at this probably, but now we're going to see how good she is doing it with me. <laughs> see how well we work together. So here's what we're going to do. Here, Kaylee, why don't you go ahead and... Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We switched cameras and got a different angle here. What we're going to do is we're going to have one minute, and folks, for all of you at home, there's going to be a timer, and the first word is going to uh, pop up on your screen, and then I'm going to be able to look at the monitor and see it. So as you see, Kaylee, you're looking at me. You can't look at the monitor, and these words are going to pop up, and I'm going to try to give Kaylee clues to see how well she thinks like me. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny about that? That's no, good. Just, so anyway, <laughs> so anyway, then, then I'm going to give Kaylee clues, and Carrie is going to keep score. We're going to have one minute, and every time a word pops up, I'll start giving you clues, and we're going to see how well you do. And then at the end of a minute, we're going to switch places, because now I want to see how well she can uh, interact with me, leading, leading me into some things. So 
we're, we're going to try it. So what we've done is we've worked out something to show you how good I think we really are. Uh, so we're, okay, let's go ahead and pop that. We're not going to start our timer yet. we got a word that we want to pop up just to show you how good we actually are. So, John, you got the word? Okay. Ready, Kaylee? I'm going to think a word. All right. What is? Ready? Go. Pizza. Pizza. There you go. <laughs> we passed the test. Actually, yeah. no, Kaylee. Yeah. Actually, Kaylee cheated a while ago when we were working on this, so she already knew that word, so we couldn't do it. So we thought we'd impress y'all. All right, so now here, here we're really going to get started. Folks, you'll be able to have your timer and the word popped up uh, on the screen. And so uh, let's see how everybody's doing. Everybody's still doing well? Uh, hey, your mom's watching, ladies. So, yeah, mama's watching, so y'all behave when you get on. All right. So, all right. Kaylee, are you ready? I'm ready. Timer ready? Carrie, you ready? Keeping score? I am. All right, Kaylee, our first word. All right, this one has a, a story of a spider. Uh, the itsy bitsy, oh wait, no. The spider and a pig. Charlotte's so, web. So, okay, uh, this one is thing that you wrap around your neck when you're cold. Scarf. Okay, uh, this is uh, uh, Peter Pan and the little- Tinkerbell? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, this is uh, Destiny's Child, lead singer, now she's real famous. No names. Uh, oh, no names, sorry, John. Pass. Pass. All right. <laughs> Uh, in, in Star Wars, the weapon they used. Lightsaber? All right. Next one. Uh, when you talk really loudly, you are... If someone says, please don't... Yell? Uh, same word for yell. Wow. Um, I don't know. Uh, it, it sounds like when you go from the inside, you go... Outside? Okay, and so what it sounds outside like? Outside? I don't know. Okay, pass, <laughs> pass. Okay, the, the seven to war... Oh, I can't, can I say that? No. Okay, this is a utensil that you eat with. Uh, spoon, no. knife, fork. That one, okay. Uh, so the, the big body of water to the west. Oh, that's time. time. Uh-oh, how many did we get? Six. Six. Whew, okay. is that good? <laughs> I don't know. All right, okay, let's switch sides. I'm like, I think they cheated us on a couple of those words I should have gotten. You said, you said Peter Pan. I'll let you go on that one. Okay, Peter Pan. <laughs> All okay. right. Are okay. you ready? I, I don't know. Okay, everybody. <laughs> Now, see, there's more. I, I'd, I'd rather be on that side. Okay, okay ready? All right, here we go. Uh, skip it. Well, oh. just kidding. <laughs> okay, you put this on your fingers. You go a and ring? get them done. No, uh, women go no and get them. Yes. Um, it's not. So, if I give you something, what am I? Said give. <laughs> um, it's a worm and it go... turns into a. A butterfly. Yes. Uh, it's a TV show. I don't know. I don't watch it. Just skip it. <laughs> you put it on your Bracelet. wrist. Yes. Um, they're blonde and it's a little girl's toy. Barbie? Yes. Um, what is this? Paper. Um, it's around Christmas time. People hide it in their house and their kids if they have oh, to behave. The elf guy. It's Elf. What are you, elf? On a shelf. Yes. Okay. Um, it's not a ma. It's <laughs> it's not a rat, but it's a a mouse. Yes. Um. Oh goodness, skip it. <laughs> um. John, John Placey's time. Drums. Oh. I feel like that counted. <laughs> it counted. How many Eight. we get? Eight. Yeah. All right. All right. Very good. Well, let's switch back over here. And uh, so, what was our what was our total score? 14. Six 14. and eight is 14. Six right? and eight is 14. All right, now, see, I've never played this game before, so would that <laughs> count as good? Well, it just means that she's better at describing and you're better at guessing. No, maybe I'm really good at describing. She's just horrible at guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows, folks? All right, well, Katie, that was our your first test. So, Carrie, mark that down. Then we'll see what your test next week is going to be. Okay. All right. So everybody, we had a great time. Hope you enjoyed watching us play. What's it called again? Heads up. Heads up. All right. We'll play. Maybe do something else next week. Uh, but we'll be ready to uh, enjoy uh, having that time. So anyway, Kaylee, why don't you go ahead and tell us what our next subject, ne the next thing is going to be? The next thing is three things you need to know. Hit it, John. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little little game that we had. It's a lot of fun. Hey, and I do want to mention very quickly before we actually get into the three things. Uh, everybody, you, you do know that 
I'm joking with Kaylee. I don't want anybody thinking, boy, what a mean preacher he is. He doesn't treat her very well. Uh, we were having a lot of fun, right, Kaylee? Yes. To be sure to tell everybody we're having fun. Yes, that's the answer. Good, good sidekick. All right. So three things that you should know. All right. First, number one. We're having uh, this this week. We're going to be starting in with our our WIT program, Women in Touch, and uh, we wanted to let you know that this Thursday we're going to be having a cool event that I think the, the ladies are going to enjoy, uh, and that's going to be uh, the hangout, ladies hangout here at the at First Baptist West. And I just wanted you to be know, knowing about it because here in just a little bit, the ladies are going to talk a lot more and they're going to give you a lot more specific details. But ladies, I want to encourage you, and guys, I want to encourage you to encourage your wives and uh, to have them come uh, to our WIT uh, fellowship tomorrow night. I think they're really going to enjoy, especially when you hear uh, what we're going to be doing. So that's number one. Number two, celebrate freedom. We are looking forward to this weekend and what a great time we're going to be having. Uh, we want to encourage you to come and be a part of our worship times uh, at 8.30 and 10.45. We're going to have a special uh, ceremony of celebrating the freedom that God has given us as a, as a nation. So please come and join us with that. We're going to have some uh, some great uh, patriotic songs and a great, uh, great time of fellowship. So uh, please join us for that. But celebrate freedom and let's not forget what God has done for us. That's number two. Number three, the summer events, they're coming. Man, we are looking forward over to the next few weeks uh, with some of the cool things that we have. The first one is going to be our youth retreat. Now, that's going to be at Beaver's Bend, and we want to encourage you. And, John, what, what date is that again? July 8th through the 10th. July 8th through the 10th. I should have written that down. July 8th through the 10th. Uh, that's going to be coming up. We're going to go to Beaver's Bend, which is in southeastern Oklahoma. And if you've been watching the commercials, you, you've seen some of the pictures. Uh, looking forward to that great time and uh, just a time for the kids to get youth to get away since we're not going to be able to go to Falls Creek. But uh, a great event. So if you know of any student that's grade 7 through 12 that would like to go with us, please contact us here at First Baptist West so we can get them in. The second summer event that we have is our Vacation Bible School Rally. Yes, folks, we are going to have Vacation Bible School this year. It's going to be a little different than what we've done in the past, uh, but we're going to focus a lot on the worship time and the rally. Uh, we're going to have a big rally every, every night starting at 6 o'clock. And uh, we'll be able to live stream that as well. So we're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to be getting more information out to you uh, starting tomorrow about that rally. So please, if you know of anyone that wants to come to Vacation Bible School, please just uh, we'll start registering here pretty quickly as well. So Vacation Bible School, it is on. Now this year, something that we will do differently already is because of the coronavirus and being able to uh, hold our numbers a little bit, we're only going to be having Vacation Bible School this year for kindergarten through sixth grade. We're not going to be having uh, preschool kindergarten. Now, we will have uh, some time for daycare or uh, child care for the workers who are helping here at Vacation Bible School. But this way, again, we're able to kind of keep the numbers down a little bit uh, and be able to, with the younger ones, we're having a harder time social distancing them. So uh, we will do it just sixth through eighth, uh, kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, this year, this year only, but Vacation Bible School is coming up. And then the last one that we want to talk about with our summer events is our sports camp. We are going to be doing that. That We always rent First Baptist West Gymnasium, and we're going to be having a full slate of, uh, of activities there. So we want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. So anybody first through sixth grade, if you know of any kids that would like to be a part of our sports camp, please uh, get in contact with the church. We're going to have online registration beginning in the next two weeks, okay? So we got a lot of stuff still going on. Even though we've been restricted, we're still able to do a lot of cool stuff. So with that, we want to just go to three things that you should know, and we hope that that helps you out. Well, let's go ahead then and bring in our guests for today. Uh, our guests are going to be uh, the sisters, as, as I told you. Uh, there, it's it's uh, Susan Nance and Sandy Sharkey, and so they're going to be here. So uh, ladies, I want to welcome you and thank you for coming and being a part of our show tonight. Thank you. Thank so, you. Now remember, as I told you, your mom is watching, so <laughs> Dolores, I've warned them. So we'll, we'll see if, if you have to get on them after the, after the program. So uh, thank you all for coming and being a part. How are you all doing? Good. 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 Family doing all right? Mm -hmm. Why don't you all tell us a little bit about your families? For some people that are tuning in, they don't know you. And, and so tell us a little bit about, about your families. Okay, well, I have um, 
a husband and two children and um, my son works at Goodyear so he got off for a while right and uh, he's back now reluctantly back and <laughs> he's kind of enjoying that time off but uh, my daughter luck I'm really blessed and lucky because my daughter lives right across the street from me and my granddaughter granddaughter and grandson okay live right across the street too All right. so Good, good. So I've been Everybody, doing a lot of visiting with grandchildren. Oh, I bet you have. Very good. I, I, I'm sure you're liking that. Yes, I Absolutely. do. I do. All right, Cindy, what about you? Tell us about your family. Well, I have Chris, who I'm married to, and um, we live out in Cash. Um, he has worked probably about every single day since everybody else has been off, so he's been really busy. Um, I have two children, Christian and my daughter-in-law, Macy, live in Oklahoma City. Um, they... Um, are very active in their church up there and then I have Morgan who is living in Jasper Alabama and right now she's on a mission trip in Macon Georgia with Hope okay. Missions okay good so now she, she when did she actually go to Georgia to, um, she left on I think they left Sunday okay and they've been there since Sunday but they're um, working on people's houses okay. who needed repairing or um, or need new roofs or paint jobs and things okay. like that. So and they're staying pretty busy. Huh? Yes, and there's um, different. I think I think she said there is 80 to 100 kids who are working. That okay. came from different churches throughout the state of Georgia and Alabama, who okay. are working with them. Oh, well, very good, very good. So she's enjoying it now. She's not there just for a few weeks, right? No. She's she's there. She's yeah. working. Well, just this week is in. But I mean, yes. her mission. Where is she actually living now? She's living in Jasper, Jasper Alabama. Alabama. Okay, yes. right. So she's there. So. Her child, Alabama. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, Thompsons. But. <laughs> oh man, well, we'll, we'll just move on for now. Yeah. But but we're good. We're we're excited for for Morgan and what she's doing. Yes. Very proud of her, and we're glad we get to help out, pray with her. And so if she, you know, tell her if she needs anything. Always, oh, she has a church here to help her. Well, thank okay. you. Very good. She knows well, that. Well, I do. Yeah. I do want to say too, because I got so excited about my grandchildren that their father Adam is the <laughs> big. He's a huge blessing in our life. So yeah, there you go. I've got to get Adam some credit for that. Those, those <laughs> sons-in-law, man, I'm telling you, yeah. I am one. So yes. uh, yeah, we, we we get to be an afterthought, but that's okay. At least you think <laughs> mm-hmm. think about it. So that's mm-hmm. good. Adam is a good guy. Yes, so we're, we're really happy to to uh, to get to know him, and so doing real well. So, ladies, the reason I had you come on is just want to talk to you about your roles here at First Baptist West. And one of the roles that you have, and you've had it basically since I've been here, is that during the summer you both go together as cooks for Falls Creek. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. what do you think about that? How, what do you think about their cooking? They're great cooks. Um, that rice chicken thing. <laughs> chicken oh. and rice. I dream of it, and I'm, I'm so sad we're not getting it this year. <laughs> oh. Wait, well, I, th- I thought you were going to a bunch. No. Or really only one, well, there's two dinners, I guess. So. Right. So how, how long have you guys been going as cooks for Falls Creek? Well, I've been going longer than Sandra because actually the first time I started going, she was a youth. Yes. So, wow. Yeah, so... <laughs> You know, my friend Kim Miller and I are the ones who started it together. Right, and, right. And yeah. she usually comes and she back still comes just about and every helps year. Us, right. Yes. So, okay. I mean, we started it before our children were born, and that was our oldest, our 32. So, um, but, you know, there were some years when the kids were little that we kind of had to, it's like, oh, darn, we're going to have to skip out on that because <laughs> we have little kids. Right. But when they got old enough to go to, you know, back then they used to have children's activities for, we'd send right. them off to some of the kids' activities and okay. still yeah. went and cooked. So you, you look forward every year to still getting to go? Yeah, I really do. Yeah. So, so what is it that, I mean, you've gone all these years. I mean, it's not an easy job. I, I've watched and, and see what you ladies have to do, three meals a day and plus snacks throughout the day. and. Mm-hmm. What, what keeps you going to Falls Creek every year? Oh, it's a blessing. It's really a blessing. And, you know, on Tuesday morning when the alarm goes off, though, I think, <laughs> why did we <laughs> do we this? this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, right. What's Friday wrong with this? Friday when the alarm goes off. Yeah, well, we no, think. Friday we're going home on Saturday. Yeah, Friday, but... yeah, Friday, yeah, Friday seems a little <laughs> yeah. more cheaper, right? Yeah, because, you true. know, the last full day and we're out of here. Mm-hmm. Well, I want you to know that I appreciate it because uh, mm-hmm. I know as pastor and then, and then John, uh, being the youth, youth pastor, that what one of the things that you don't have to worry about is are the meals mm-hmm. and that's a pretty big deal so I just really appreciate it. I know the kids always talk about 
What a great job you do. And and not only the cook, but you, you, you both really have a sweet spirit with the kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you're not barking at them. And well, we're always them hoping them. we're not doing I mean, you know, I always think, <laughs> oh, man, I don't want to be, go down as one of those grouchy cooks. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought my cooks, when I went to Foster Creek, were cranky. So it was, you I know. I hope they're not around or watching. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that's too long ago. Did you mention names? Do you want to name some names? <laughs> I was thinking more when I was at a, yeah, no. No, I'm pretty sure mine are gone when so, I was kids. If but. you went as a cook when Sandy was used, I'm sorry. You weren't that cranky. I'm sure. She was just a young teenager. Yes. And that's what you hope the teenagers will see, compassion and kindness yeah, in you, absolutely. and not that cranky mm-hmm. cook who yelled at you for coming into the kitchen. To be fair, we're all tired. So yes. us being like, oh, they're probably being really sweet, but we're just like exhausted and don't yes. take it that way. Yeah, and I'm sure they're looking at us going, I can't believe they keep talking to us. The only, the only thing that's ever made us cranky is when the cell phones get put in our room and they go <laughs> off all night long. Yes. <laughs> well, that's not but my that doesn't fault. happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah, John does a good job of that. Yeah. I guess yes. I may not have that, that even goes back years ago. John. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, all right. before. Yeah. Well, we, I, I know we look forward to having you all at Falls Creek. And, and then we've got the retreat coming up since we're not getting to go to Falls Creek. So are you both getting to go with this? I'm getting to go, and Kim Miller's going, okay. and Sandra isn't going to be able to go this year. But oh, okay. I think I, I remember you telling yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to be able to go with yeah. us. So. She's going to break her running streak, but oh, yeah. we'll get her back in next year. Yeah, we'll year. get her. Yeah, we'll, she'll miss, she'll miss the, what we hope will be an easy week. <laughs> well, you know, through the years I kept saying, okay, when Whitney graduates, when Brennan graduates, when Christian graduates, when yeah, Morgan graduates, graduates mm-hmm. now it's like, okay, i got to wait for Sophia and Mason. Well, that's what I, said, you I think we'll be too I don't know. It might be way <laughs> too old by then. <laughs> we might become the cranky cook by then. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be cranky by she'll the time going, Sophia oh. gets to go to Paul. And, and knowing her, she'll be going, I just I don't know them. I don't want them to go. I don't no. want them to go. But anyway, well, thank you for that. The, the second thing that, that I really wanted to have you on to talk about was, of course, our women's ministry, the WIT program. Uh, why don't you uh, kind of describe what WIT actually is? Well, WIT is, and that's something we really started <clears throat> over 30 years ago too and it was when we first started it was just the fellowship we felt like we needed a time for women of all ages we didn't want it just for the young or we wanted a whole mixture to be able to come together mm-hmm. and um, just visit and fellowship and right. you know and we usually always throw a few um, you know spiritual things in there right and uh, but we mainly want the the fellowship and you know eating and um, just getting to know each other because when you come just to church and you come in and you sit down you don't you can walk around and say things but you don't get to visit or get to know each other and um, the same thing with going to Sunday school you know Sunday school starts and you have to stop talking and plus you're not in the mixture of different ages that was always our goal is to have a um, and we've gone from just having that fellowship. There were some ladies that um, decided to get together, and um, we just took it into all different aspects of having the fellowship, which is the last Thursday of each month, to having um, putting our bi- women's Bible study underneath that. Right. And then our, you know, doing some things that were in reach to the ladies in our church, outreach to women outside of our church, mm-hmm. and... Um, well, I know you, you, you also do some mission stuff yes. uh, that you organize to do for the ladies to be involved. And that's kind of through our inreach and outreach. Mm-hmm. You okay. know, inreach, doing some mission things for ladies in our church. And uh, like our widow's banquet, which we didn't get to do, that's kind of for the ladies in our church. But we also have some of our widows who invite ladies outside of our church. Right. We've always had, you know, ladies that come from outside of our church. Okay. And then we also have um, a prayer chain. So if there's ever anyone who wants the wit, uh, there's all kinds of ladies. uh, We have a whole list of ladies. They can call the church and um, say, could you please put this on the wit prayer chain? Right. And um, your wife actually sends that out. Yeah, she actually is in charge of it. Mm -hmm, Yeah. mm -hmm. Well, and I know you do, as you mentioned, we do Wednesday night Bible studies. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's underneath yours as well, right? Mm -hmm. And we do starting in the fall and we have one in the spring. Yes. So 
and that just involves the ladies mm -hmm. on Wednesday nights. And then Tuesday morning. And that's oh, really yes. always been a wide array of ages too, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have young girls in their 20s, from 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I mean, my mom comes, so, sorry mom, 80s. <laughs> So, You're having so much trouble. Yeah, yeah. So, well, well, she good. just now turned 80. So. Yeah, and so so you have the Bible studies. Uh, you have Tuesday morning, as Carol does, yes. usually the Tuesday morning Carol Bible studies. Carol is our blessing on Tuesday yeah, morning. Yeah, she does yes. a great job yes, with that. Does. So, well, good. Uh, now, what are your goals for WIT from here on? What, what are the kind of things you are hoping to be able to have? Uh, just to have more ladies get involved and... And really this last year, which has just tremendously been cut short, um, because starting in January, I really wanted us to be intentional about inviting ladies right. to our fellowship and to the Bible studies. And, you know, you can always announce it, but for people who are new to our church, I mean, there are some ladies <clears throat> who will just flat, you know, come and they have no right. problem with it. But I myself, if somebody didn't take me and specifically ask me to come be a part of something, it would be hard for me in a, in a situation right. where I didn't know people. Right, right. Well, that's one of the exciting things that I see with the Women in Touch. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great ministry. Now, finally, uh, tomorrow night, mm -hmm. got a pretty cool event coming up. So okay. do you want to share uh, to which one tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, we decided we called it Tailgating for Jesus. And we wanted, okay. we've been... Um, in March, we didn't have WIT at all. And one of the things about WIT is wanting to connect with people. We want women to connect with each other. And because being a military town, sometimes you get here and people have friends or family here. And so we want to make sure we get them into it, our fellowship so they can get to know each other. And so and then April and May, we, Susan and I were talking and we we're like, oh my goodness, we could Zoom WIT. And it was right. so exciting the first time we Zoomed it in April. And so, and then we did it again in May. And um, Tracy Powell came and did our devotion for us. And even though we could see each other's faces, we still didn't, I mean, it's something different about being in person. Right. And so we started brainstorming and um, we decided, well, we could do a, dis a social, social distancing out in the parking lot at the church. Um, we usually, in June and July, we usually go out to a restaurant. And even though there's restaurants open, we knew there would be some people who would be hesitant about right. wanting to eat out sure. or even being able to comp you know, have a large group in a restaurant. And so we decided, well, everybody could bring their own dinner and then we can get in a circle. We can bring, we can put our cars and do our tailgates up or you can bring a chair and we're just going to sit and talk and fellowship, play oh, games and have good. a good time. Just having that person to person. And so what time does that start? Tomorrow? It starts at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Yes. So you'll, you'll just meet out here in the parking yes. lot and get We're out. We're going to do just... the West End parking lot. It's Hopefully where the shade is. Where the shade is. Yes, yes. Nice that. shade over in that yes. area. So West parking lot tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, and bring bring their bring their food, whatever yes. they stop. Whatever their best favorite food, dinner whatever they want it is. to do. For themselves, their own food. Yes. Okay. And then you'll just sit around and fellowship. Mm -hmm. well, man, have a good time. Good. Well, ladies, we want to encourage you to come and be a part of uh, the Tailgating for Jesus tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. and going to have a great time. Looking forward to that. And, of course, I, I won't be there, but I'll get reports hopefully <laughs> yes. by my wife and others how good it was. So, listen, you guys, are, ladies, are a blessing to me and a blessing to our church. And uh, you're a lot of fun to be around. And we could visit forever, but I, I told you I wouldn't keep you alone tonight. <laughs> and you all both were so gracious to accept to be here. So, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you for... Uh, being here tonight, had a lot of fun with you. Um, Dolores, they did well. You, you, you don't have to get on to them tonight. They did well. Did well. So can I pray over you just mm -hmm. a moment, though, and then, mm -hmm. then we'll move on and let you ladies get out of here. Okay? Well, thank you. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for uh, these ladies that have come here tonight. God, I thank you for what they mean to me, what they mean to our church. And Father, I thank you for the example that they continue to, uh, continue to set for our young people and for uh, the adults of our church, the ladies especially. And Father, I pray that you would just continue to give them strength and encouragement. Help them, Lord, through uh, the, the rest of this summer. And with the, the event tomorrow, I pray, God, that you would stir the hearts of our women to come and be a part of this time just to sit together and fellowship. And that, God, you can move uh, through that time. And through the rest of the things that we have for the summer and then things of the Bible studies coming, coming up in the fall, I ask God that you uh, just anoint them so that, that, Lord, they could come up and be leading in the studies that you want for our ladies. 
And God, we again thank you for all you're doing. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Ladies, thank you again for coming. So before we uh, let them go, we will split now to our commercial break, and then we'll move on into our Bible study. Ladies, again, thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, thanks for joining in our program tonight and we're going to be getting back to our regular schedule here in just a moment, but I want to take a, some time and share some thoughts with you from the scripture. I do want to bring attention to uh, the way things look behind me and on this table tonight uh, that we are preparing for our Celebrate Freedom uh, celebration this Sunday morning and we're looking forward to a great time in our 8.30 and our 10.45 service and we want to invite you uh, to come and be with us as we uh, have a great time together, but if you're not able to make it, then join in again at 1045 for our live stream, and you can still be a part of some great things going on. You know, I've been thinking about, um, with all the confusion, all the things that are going on in our world, have you ever just thought about what we received from salvation? That we have a, a comfort and we have a peace, that we have joy, we have a confidence, we have an assurance. All that's gained from salvation. And then you think about, what do we get from heaven? all the things of heaven and eternity, and what will that be like? And it makes you just, as you think about it, it makes me say, wow. Man, we rejoice, we rejoice over that. We, we have joy through that. But then I got to thinking, in all of this, Christ is the one who made this possible. What does he receive from it? We see that Christ's suffering seems out of all this that he gets nothing. Oh, we see the loneliness and the pain and the shame. And what does he get? Well, the Bible talks about that here in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So we look at this and we say, okay, with all the things that he was about to endure that he looked beyond that, and it basically says that he uh, was the joy that was set before him. There was the cross, but yet the joy that was set before him. And I got to thinking about, what joy? Well, then it occurred to me as I read this, I, I began to think about two things very quickly. The first one was this, the joy of glorifying God. The word glorify here means to to make known, to make God known to the masses, to make God man, known to man, to make the possibility of a relationship between man and God being made known. In John 17, 1, he says, glorify your son, that your son can glorify you. So he, the joy of knowing that he was pleasing the Father by doing exactly what God had sent him to do, that was a joy. The second joy is not just pleasing the Father, but it's, it's the idea of seeing us, you and I, being forgiven and restored to a right relationship with God. That was the joy that he set. That was the joy that was set before him. I want you to think about if you have kids. Think about Christmas morning when your kids come down uh, and, and into the living room and they see the, the tree and the, and the gifts and, and you say, it's time we can open the gifts. You, what, as a parent, man, that, that's, that's what it's all about is to be able to see the joy in our kids' faces. What about a birthday with someone that's special to us? Or what about special events? Knowing that we've done something that someone else is going to find excitement in. Man, that, that's pleasing to us. And then I want to take you to the first Easter morning when Jesus the, revealed himself to Mary Magdalene. When he revealed himself to Peter who had just three days ago had denied Jesus three times. What about the apostles who had all run off? that he was revealing himself to them, the joy of seeing that on their faces, to go from, from, from destruction to life. Man, it, it, that was the joy that was set before him. 
What about, what about me? What about being saved? What about you when you receive Jesus into your life? The joy that's there, man, the difference that he makes, that was the joy that's set before him. What about every time that he blesses us, that he works in our lives, and he brings a special blessing, a special moment to us, how the joy that is on our faces must mean to him. What about heaven? What about that place that Jesus promised us in John chapter 14? He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and that if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Can you imagine Jesus has a place ready for us, and one day we're going to get to see it, and he comes and receives us to himself? The, the joy that's going to be on his face when we go, wow, this is more than I've ever even imagined in my life, and in my mind I couldn't even imagine this. Can you imagine the joy that Jesus is going to experience? So, my friends, even while he was hanging on the cross, even while he was struggling in the garden, the joy that set before him, the joy of knowing that he was doing exactly what God wanted him to do, and he was going to complete that task. And the second one, the joy of seeing us restored in the right relationship with God. What a difference that can make. So that's what I began to think about. And I, I want you to be encouraged tonight that Jesus finds joy in your life. When we turn our hearts to him, when we are obedient to him, he See, he gets joy from that. And he doesn't even think about the cross because of what we have gotten from him. So it's not be encouraged, be of good cheer. Jesus Christ has made a right relationship between you and God possible. And so I pray that you would turn to that tonight. And I pray that in the craziness of this time, we would find peace through Jesus Christ. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we do Thank you for your love, your grace. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus to down the cross for us. And thank you for the joy that I know he receives every time a lost sinner comes to, to, comes to redemption. And Father, I look forward to that day when he gets to see the look on our faces as we see all that he's prepared for us. God, I pray if there's someone here tonight that's watching or someone that'll be watching later on, that God feels an emptiness or a need in their life, that they would know that Jesus Christ has made a right relationship with them possible, and that, God, they would turn to him and call on his name. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for this nation, and we thank you for our church. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Let's get back to our program. All right, thank you for joining in with us again and hope you enjoyed that Bible study. We were just making comments a few moments ago about how it looked like I was actually running for a political office with that. Uh, but as I described it in the beginning, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you know why it looked like that. I'm really not running for any office. I don't want to do anything that I have to be voted in or out. So anyway, well, thank you for joining back with us. We have some very special guests with us tonight. Uh, we have Adam, Sarah, and Hadley Wyatt. And uh, we're so glad to have you all on our program tonight. And uh, I've been looking forward to finally getting you on. We've tried a couple weeks, but you guys have really been tied up. And you've been wheat. Custom wheat, or doing wheat harvest, yeah. Yeah, so I know that keeps you pretty busy. So uh, we're, we're honored to have you guys with us here tonight. And uh, th this family is an amazing family, and they're very special to, to me and to our church. And they've got some amazing stories about how God has done some great works in their lives. And so that's why I wanted them to come on. So many of you may that have just joined our church, or maybe you're watching and you uh, really are not familiar with the members of our church, that uh, I want you to hear part of their story. Uh, but now, Hadley is not your only daughter. Uh, we have we have Mia, a cowgirl. I call her cowgirl. Uh, but Mia, who's not here, but I wanted we wanted to show everybody something they brought up uh, during the whenever we were not able to meet in worship. You guys created an area for you so that and you had your uh, you, you, they made a sign for me. And if you can, let me kind of get the, there. You go. And you, I want you to zoom in there, John. Uh, and I think I even introduced this on my one of my first shows. Was you notice? And guess who's not in the picture again? Poor, poor cowgirl, man. I don't think she it, she does exist though. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah she tell does. everybody. Yeah, cowgirl does exist. So yeah. she got booted out of the picture, and now she's not here tonight. She is real. Uh, She's loved, and we love her, and we're not trying to push her off or anything. But So, Cowgirl, if you're watching this, we do love you and look forward to maybe one day you getting to be on and we get a good picture of you. Uh, so, anyway, so how, how are things going for y'all? 
Good. Y'all been really busy. Yeah, mm-hmm. we both we're both involved in agriculture, so we both have worked through the whole, um, you know, coronavirus deal. So um, life pretty much has just gone regular for us, other than our kids were out of school in March, right. and so um, that's just been mostly the challenge is you know making sure the kids are taken care of yeah. and and doing that. So 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 do you get do you get to farm a lot? We help take lunch to the field. Okay, there you go. So you you get to be a part of it. Very good, very good. So life really had changed for you all no, no. girls, huh? Other than it, it kind of provided a little bit of a relief from the kid, the kids' activities because you know our kids are at the age where they're really busy and right. there's some kind of practice or something they need to be at every mm-hmm. night. So you're always rushing home to. You know, get them to where they need to go, and of course everything stopped. So right, it was right. nice that we were able to be home and just you know be home as a family and cook every night, have a meal at the table every yeah. night, and do that. So and then of course with now with Calvary getting to play softball, that's yeah. That's then then it's picked back picked up, up a, little a little bit. Yeah, and, and she gets to play softball every night except the nights that I finally yeah. get free to go watch <laughs> yeah. her, and yeah. I've been been able to go twice. Yeah. And they've both been canceled, canceled. each time. So, <laughs> maybe it's well, you. Yeah, maybe it is. Yeah. What, we, the we thing with the agriculture, it just it never stops. So we, you know, you, you got livestock that's still having animals, having babies. Right. Uh, you know, they, they don't know what's going on in the world. So they, <laughs> they have to, you know, they're, they're, you know, we're still having animals and being born. And then we got crops being grown and you got to feed the nation, feed the world. So right. you, it just, it doesn't stop. And so right. it it's immune to all this is what it is so sure, sure. and uh so you know we've had to continue life as normal you know so right well one and, thing about it you you don't have to worry a lot about social distancing yeah no, <laughs> you know, what you're doing, right? yeah 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 in fact you kind of wish you had to worry about it if it had more yeah, help, help yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 exactly well good well you, you guys as i mentioned earlier have just a ama- couple of amazing stories about how god is done some amazing work in your Mm -hmm. life and and it deals with both of your daughters Um, I wanted to focus a little bit tonight on on Hadley Um, of course with Mia not being here uh, I want her I'd like her to be here when we talk about her her story but you might just quickly mention about Mia uh, uh, Mia with how how things work with with you with her very quickly Um, well Mia's our oldest daughter she's um, 12 years old and um, we I um, really struggled to have children, and so um, we went the route of adoption, uh-huh. and um, we did an op- we went through the open adoption program, and so um, we ended up adopting Mia at birth. Um, we were there for her birth, and um, so we ended up adopting her, and um, the open adoption has just uh, been an incredible blessing to us. Um, we have a relationship with her birth mother and the birth father's family. Um, we see them often, and um, they they treat Hadley just like they do Mia, uh-huh. and um, yeah. we just ha- the, with the open adoption, um, it just provides so much more as far as having access to medical information. Um, mm-hmm. You know, any questions? Um, Mia has a great relationship with the birth mother. She just calls her by her name. Um, you know, if she ever wants to talk to her or ask her mm-hmm. why, um, she can do that. Okay. Good. But another um, interesting thing about her adoption is we lived in Texas when we first got married and worked down there. And um, we just were wanting to change um, in jobs and, and different things. And so um, Mia was born in Dodge City, Kansas. Okay. And if we, we had moved back to Kansas at the, when we were way before we were planning on having children. And um, if we hadn't have moved back to Kansas, we would not have Mia. Wow. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have gone through the open adoption program in Dodge City. Mm -hmm. And then um, just the way it all worked, if we hadn't have been in Kansas, it wouldn't have happened. We wouldn't have Mia. Yeah. And that's a great story. And if y'all can, probably the next few weeks, uh, when, especially when Calvary is free, that I'd love to come back and share to have you share more on that because I've, I've heard the story and and it is something that you it is amazing God's hand in all of that mm-hmm. so so that that's one but what I want to look at tonight is with uh, with the incident that went on for many of you who are not aware 
to know this family that and shortly after y'all started coming to church mm -hmm. here, uh, you were in Stillwater during the, the, the accident. Not, I don't even know what to call it. It's, it wasn't an That's accident. An accident. <laughs> uh, but during the event of the parade there in Stillwater, and you guys were actively involved in that. So uh, why don't you share just a little bit about that day and what went on? Well, we're um, Adam and I are both OSU alumni, and we've always gone back to OSU homecoming. Mm -hmm. And um, once we had children, it was always our dream to take them back and share our love of OSU with them. And so we just always, um, we always went to homecoming. We went to the parade. We did it every year. And um, that day we went and we picked a different spot, <laughs> and it was the wrong spot. Um, so, um, Hadley was, um, probably, I don't know, 10 feet away from us. She had moved a little ways, um, to, um, be able to see better. She was with her cousins and Mia and, um, a girl decided to drive through the crowd and Hadley was one of the ones hit. And so, um, after when it happened, um, we couldn't find either one of our children. And um, we finally found Mia, but we couldn't find Hadley. And um, finally I found her on the street. And um, from there, um, she I, I thought she was gone. Um, and so- um, When we found her, there was uh, two civilian nurses already that was working on her. Right. And which was a miracle right there just to have civilian nurses just Amen. right there. And then the National Guard had just marched through the parade three minutes before. Mm -hmm. And they were less than a quarter block. So the National Guard came back. They turned around, heard it, walked, marched right back. And they were there within minutes. And the first responders had just pulled through the parade. Right. They'd just gotten doing their end of the parade. Wow. So when this incident happened, you had civilian nurses, first responders, and National Guard within seconds of responding right. to it. You didn't have to wait. Right. So, wow. I mean, if it had to happen when it did, <laughs> couldn't have, I mean, and so you had personnel working on doing triage right there in the middle of the street. Right. But trained personnel. Yeah, right. It wasn't just civilian people trying no, to do their best. No, it was people that it was people, people that knew knew what to do. I mean, they knew how to deal with head trauma, you know, broken limbs, how to manage all that. Right. And there weren't people just sitting there for minutes and waiting on stuff. So you had people there that which was a miracle right in itself, Amen. you know. And that's that's what I say is there's no other way to explain what happened and that she's alive than God. Amen. Um, it's the, the hands and feet of Jesus were those people right. that came to us and you know were on the, on the ground with Hadley yeah. and right. there was there's one lady that um, she got down with Hadley and her mother pr um, prayed over Hadley really okay and there um, it just it it's just a, a miracle yeah <laughs> what the the sequence of events that happened and um, then when we got to the, we eventually got to the ER in Stillwater, and um, there and a was a police. A, nas a National Guardsman, he just walked up to us and says, you better take me with you. You're going well, to Well, I, I turned to, I turned, I, we picked, we ended up picking her up. Because there was so many. Because uh, we felt like we weren't getting help. Right. And, and I know that's not right, but when you're in the situation. No, I understand. And they um, said, they said, you can go on to the hospital yourself. When I picked her up and turned around, there was a guardsman standing there and I said will you please go with us because I was afraid we might lose her and I didn't want it just to be Adam and I in the yeah. pickup with with her and he is an amazing young man um, he helped uh, Adam get through traffic because all the streets were shut down to get to the hospital because there was a parade <laughs> right right and so um, he helped you know guide traffic and um, when you're in that situation, you know you need to pray, and that's the only thing you have, but you can't. Right. And um, I turned to him, and I said, will you please just pray for us? 
I didn't know if he was a Christian or not. And he did. And um, we he helped us get Hadley into the emergency room. And then um, he just disappeared. Mm-hmm. And um, But then when we were at the emergency room, another um, police officer came and found us in the hospital and said, I was there with her as soon as it happened. He said, she looks just like my little girl. And he said, I couldn't leave her. Wow. And, um, you know, how he found us. <laughs> right, right. To be able to tell us that, that he was there with her, mm-hmm. you know, and to know that somebody was there with her on the street from the very, very beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, you just, you can't explain that, <laughs> right, <laughs> you know. Right, right. Absolutely. So when, when you when you you got to the hospital and to the to the ER, um, what 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 did they tell you from at that point? They didn't tell us a lot. Um, they just they stabilized everybody, mm-hmm. and it was uh, you got fifty people coming into a Absolutely. local hospital that have got level one to level three injuries. Uh, they decided to start life watching everybody out. We just started here in so, helicopters. So they called all the life watches in the state, and they were running about eight ho- eight helicopters. Okay. They were passing each other in the air. And, and they were you, just, you were able to get Hadley to OU Medical. OU Medical. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. They okay. But then again, um, she was six at the time, and she was a big mama's girl, <laughs> and um, we had to put her on that helicopter by herself. Yeah. And so um, that was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, but God was with her. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, we had called Adam's parents when it happened, and they had left Lawton to get up there. And thankfully, I, I was scared to death that she was going to get there and not know anybody and mm-hmm. be terrified. And um, But his parents were able to be there when she landed. And so, um, you know, God orchestrated <laughs> that Amen. again. Yeah. <laughs> but then... Um, she had surgery that night and everything and then um, we got a room there at children's and the most amazing thing to me is all the people that helped us on the street came back to us yeah because i i can tell you that you could line those people up that people that said that they held me and helped me yeah. they um, prayed over hadley in the street and helped helped hadley and um even the National Guardsman that I turned to and was in our pickup and I asked to pray and carried my child. Mm-hmm. I didn't know who it was. <laughs> right, right. And um, God brought all those people back to us in the hospital and they came and they said, I was the one that held you and told you it was going to be okay. And I was the one that prayed. I was down with Hadley while my mom prayed over Hadley. And I was the nurse <laughs> that right. told you that she was breathing. And um, then we were able to track down the guardsman, and we were able to um, meet him and reconnect with him. Right. And so um, just all the people that um, helped us on in that tragic moment. Yeah. Um, on that first night, Governor Mary Fallon came to our room. Right. With her husband, and she had no security. She slipped in a back door, came to our room, not publicized, nothing. Right. And she went and saw all the victims and then slipped back out. Wow. She didn't want no cameras, sure. nothing. She just knew it was a big deal, and Amen. so she needed to be there. And so you started getting pretty good news yeah. after that, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Came back, because I remember being there when they were coming back in and, yeah. and sharing some things. So how have things been going since then for, for her? Really good. I mean, she um, had follow-up appointments pretty often um, after it happened, but those have really um, been spaced back out. Mm-hmm. And... You know, other than she's got some scars, and right. but she doesn't have anything. She didn't. It's just a miracle she didn't have anything internal. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, Amen. That you know, um, so um, she's doing. She's doing great. She doesn't. She doesn't remember. She doesn't know anything. I mean, she mm-hmm. only knows what we tell her. Right. And what right. we talk right. about. Um, she doesn't remember being. She doesn't know. That she, she doesn't remember the moment she was hit. Mm-hmm. She doesn't remember laying on the street. She doesn't remember much until about Monday. Okay. Do you do you remember? Because I, I know you had some famous people come by and see you, right? Do you remember them? Yeah. Who were some of the famous people that, other than the governor? 
um, Kevin Durant came to see me. Uh huh. And a lot of the Russell Westbrook. Oh yeah, Russell Westbrook came. And what was the other? The person? OSU football team. The OSU football team and. Didn't the cheerleaders come? Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't Miss Christian. Oklahoma? Yeah, Miss Oklahoma came. Right. The president of right. OSU. The president of OSU. Yeah. That, that's been so cool and, and I, of course watching her grow uh, from that has just been amazing and again see God's hand over, over mm -hmm. her and over y'all has just been very inspiring and seeing how she has developed and, and the right. young lady that she's becoming mm -hmm. is, is just absolutely and that's why I want y'all to come and it's just, yeah. it's just a, 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 I get goosebumps every time I hear y'all talk about it and then what is really amazing is how you, you acknowledge that God had this, mm -hmm. he, he worked this, that if it hadn't been for him working everything perfectly, mm -hmm. that things could have been different. Mm -hmm. And so I, I appreciate y'all acknowledging, acknowledging God in all of this. So Well, and you saw her in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, her, most of her injuries were to her face. Right. And um, that was the main concern at the time. You just, right. you know, she was six years old. Um, and it was pretty bad and you know th there again we just didn't know what to expect or you know how it was going to turn out <laughs> right right um but god worked another miracle and it looks amazing and oh absolutely um she's healed amazingly well, and i, know that I mean i never dreamed that, that this is what we would end up with <laughs> yeah and i know we, we were praying over that that, that was a big concern was the, the effects from that and how god is just mm -hmm really developing that even and, and turning it uh, into something good you know that's not going to be a big major reminder for the rest of her life of, of, of the things that went on mm -hmm. so that that's been amazing I, I, I do know one light-hearted part of that night was of course y'all had all been to the OSU game well that same night I was at the OU football game that day I was at the OU football game and uh, y'all had been trying to get a hold of me finally my wife got a hold of me and I said, okay, well, I'm headed to Children's. And I remember you and uh, your dad and I were sitting at a table in, in the room, and you were in the bed with, with Hadley, and, and I guess an aunt or somebody. And, and of course, all these people, y'all are OSU fans, and the whole family is OSU, and, and everybody was coming from a football game, so they were in their OSU stuff. <clears throat> and here I am, I came from an OU football game, and I'm, I'm wearing my OU stuff. And I remember this lady, we were sitting around the table talking, and this lady walked in and she said hi. And then she looked over and goes, who are you? You don't fit in here. <laughs> so and I just started laughing. Yeah. Said, oh, okay. So she, I stood out just a little bit in y'all's yeah. yeah. hospital room. Yeah. But, but just to see your family come together and the people, uh, it's just been amazing. And then, again, see God just taking those things and even in her mind, not being able to recall Mm -hmm. that stuff but being able to remember the Kevin Durant and all those mm -hmm. guys people and she just has an her. amazing testimony yeah absolutely and uh, can't wait to sometime hear her just mm -hmm. share and the other know. thing is um, you mentioned we had not we had moved to Oklahoma <laughs> that year in May and um, this happened in October we mm -hmm. had just I think started coming to church here in July right, right. So we were rather new here at the church, and I mean, God just put the church in our hands. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, between you and the Sunday school class, and you know how the church stepped up and just helped us and right. wrapped our arms around us at that time was amazing yeah. and such a blessing well, for you. being new to the area and yeah. everything. Well, we we are honored to have y'all, and we love to hear the testimony and love to have gotten to be a part of the ministry for for you and and that's always going to be there so so Haley how are you doing now everything good yeah you, you looking forward to school starting back up um, a little bit a little bit a little bit so you've had a long extended spring break huh uh -huh. yeah yeah so so what are your plans for this summer Softball team got canceled. Oh, yeah, just just normal, huh? Everything's getting canceled. So you, you just gotta hang out at the house, huh? Uh -huh. Okay. Well, good. Well, Eat listen, some animals. We'll, yeah, yeah, having animals. Yeah. But we're excited. Thank y'all again for coming and being a part of this. And Thank I'd love to have you come us. back and 
and share some more of this and also with the cowgirl and and the things that that's an amazing story too just hearing how how she's done and how mm -hmm. god has blessed even had his hands on that one and so uh i'd love to have y'all come back if, if, if we can work it out i know you guys are really busy and and i just thank y'all for spending your time with us here tonight and reliving this i i i don't want it to be like that of well would we ask you to talk about it again but it's such a great testimony and a lot of us that we've had new people join our church since you guys uh, went through that and i really want people there and we again have people that really aren't even a part of our church watching this and i thought man what a great testimony if and i appreciate y'all being willing to to just share that with us tonight on the program. So do you mind if I pray with y'all real sure. quick before we close? But again, thank y'all for coming. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you and we thank you for your blessing. And God, thank you for your protection and your watch care. And God, you have proven so many times to all of us how merciful you are and how you do watch over us. And, and God, I thank you for this family. I thank you for what they mean to me and what they mean to this church. And God, I thank you for that day of your having your hand over, over every piece of that. And that God, you, you took care of Hadley. And you took care of, of the family. And God, you placed everything in their path and showed favor, even through a very difficult time. And Father, I thank you that Hadley is doing so well. And God, it's been a joy and a privilege to watch her grow into uh, the young lady that she is. And I pray that you would continue uh, to show favor on her, Lord, throughout her life. And let her never forget what you've done for her. And Lord, I thank you um, for her decision uh, in her testimony to follow you. And, and God, I just pray that you'd show her that favor. And God, I pray that you would be with the entire family through the rest of their lives, God, that they would continue to just know your presence in their life. And God, bless their, their farm and the work that they do there. Um, bless them, Lord, as they continue to testify about your goodness. And God, we just look forward to seeing more of what you're going to do in their lives. And Father, it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Well, thank you again for coming. And I want to take a moment, just thank all of you for joining our program tonight. Hope you've enjoyed it. And we look forward to uh, Sunday morning. want to ask you to come at 830 or 1045 for Celebrate Freedom. And we look forward to that. And if you can't join us live, then remember at 1045, we'll do our live stream service. And uh, it, it'll be a great time. Kaylee did a good job. We, I think when you passed your first test of going from sidekick to co-host. And so we're looking forward to next week. I'm ready for the challenge. You're ready. All right. <laughs> well, thank you again. God bless you. And y'all have a great week. And we look forward to being with you on Sunday morning. I hope you'll join us again next week, 630 for First Baptist West Facebook Live. God bless you. Mm -hmm.